Hi. One stock mentioned here has already produced spectacular results, but may have even better results up its sleeve. Which one is it? The stock is Fossil, F-O-S-L symbol. Today is the fourth time I'm mentioning it. It was first mentioned when it was about four buck fifty. Then again, once it's doubled, and a third time, once it's tripled. Well, Fossil just reported last night, and it shattered expectations the stock soared 40% overnight. So now at 19, it is four and a half times its initial price. A four and a half beggar in less than two years. Nice. How high can it go? This, of course, you'll have to determine for yourself. But to help you a little, here is a short review of what I said before about it and the method that helped it be chosen as an example. The review has four parts. First, how Fossil was found to be a potential bargain, maybe. Second, how it was decided it was worth sleuthing. Third, how it was sleuthed. Four, and finally, how to decide now how long to hang on to it, if at all. All in theory. Let's take them all in order. First, how it was found. Fossil was found by leafing through value line comparative tables, looking for fallen stocks of good companies with good earnings that are also cyclical, but have a long history. That is, not recent IPOs or stock with two, three year history. This is called the power law. It says that if a company had survived for 25 years or more, it is a far better chance of surviving further a temporary problem than a younger stock. I then took a look at the balance sheet. It was good, lots of cash, little debt. So even when the company lost money, cash flow was not bad, no bankruptcy here. Finally, I did a scan of insiders' transactions and found that many insiders were buying. In fact, they were buying hand over fist. The question was why? What did they know? Why was the stock cheap? And could it go any higher? Here is where I went to value line individual pages, where on one page, you can see a stock's financial history in a glance. Warren Buffett, one famously said he loves value line, and so do I. Today, by the way, you can get subscription to it for free through many public libraries. Look it up. In Fossil's page, I could see the company had a peak revenue per share of $45 a few years ago, on which it attained net margins of 12%. This gave it a peak price of 132, or about three times revenue per share. Don't forget, when I was looking at the stock, it was only four buck 50. What was the ratio now at four buck 50? Well, once the stock fell to four buck 50, revenue has plunged to 25 bucks a share, less than the 45 at the peak. That's because of COVID. So from three times sales, the stock was now trading at 0.2 times sales. How was that for cheap? On buying, on top of buying all this sales for nothing, the four buck fifty stock price was also getting about four bucks a share in cash. All in all, it appeared to be a bargain, but was it really? This, of course, depended on the future business. Would it keep plunging further after COVID, or will it go up? For this, I had to go sleuthing. I talked to a few people. Let me stay vague about it here and soon became almost convinced. The final clue was when I talked to clerks at the Fossil store in Florence, Italy, where I was vacationing. The salespeople there told me that almost no one was buying in the store because everyone was buying online. Oh yeah, said the depressed salespeople. The company was making money, lots of it, since online sales had a huge margin compared to regular retail sales. But the shop sales people were making peanuts. In fact, the salespeople grumbled. The store was probably being kept open only as advertising. I sympathized, then went to the plaza, bought an espresso, and did some calculations. Let's see now. Bottom sales post-COVID of 25 bucks per share. But the company was cutting costs and moving sales online. So future margins would be much higher. In fact, even if the company got back previous peak margins of 12%, the 25 bucks per share revenue could produce earnings of three bucks. And that for a stock of four bucks 50? And if online sales margins went to 20% or even more, 
then the 25 bucks revenue per share of the bottom would produce earning per share of five, more than the price. And if sales ever grew back to 45, the peak before, let alone above the previous peak, we'd be looking at nine to 10 bucks earnings per share. And how much would the stock price be then at 15 times earnings? Well, well, it would then have a chance of getting back to the previous peak of 132, maybe even more, or do you know? Clearly, if management did this thing right, this could be a mega multi bagger But would it? Could it? Was management doing things right? Was it really? So when I got back to Toronto, I began checking. Checking what? Checking how? Here, I'd rather stay vague about who I talked to than what I asked. But I can say that what I tried to check was the quality of the people and the quality of the team. Here is why. The mistake of most investment analysts that they try to forecast which product will sell, which won't. But that's really taking management job away, also called micromanaging. It's not your job as a sleuth to outguess management. It's uh, like giving your money to a money manager to run, then try to guess which stock he or she will buy. You can't do that. You are buying their stock picking ability. So don't try to outguess them. And in Fossil, I learned, the company was investing in building teams of watch designers and marketers, basically market pickers, both internal and external watches. And these teams were getting to know each other and making the right decisions together, both to take on a product line to design themselves or cut it off when it doesn't work. If they hit upon a good product line, they piled resources behind it. If it was bad, they clipped it and redirected the effort, just like a good trader does. When all goes well, go big. When it's not, cut your losses fast. Unlike Apple, that did all its watches in-house with one product line, Fossil was aiming to become a watch picker, both of its own watches and handheld jewelry and outside watches. After all, it was a matter, and after all this, it was a matter of cross-checking and more analysis and eventually of deciding for me whether to buy the stock. And did I buy? Well, like a gentleman in affairs of the heart. This is something a sleuth never tells. I'd only say that I was very happy that the stock mentioned here at less than five is now at almost 20. That is the four bagger, almost four and a half bagger, with perhaps a chance for another five bagger from here? In theory, of course, only in theory. Whether it will get there in reality is up to you to decide. In other words, get sleuthing. If you want to know more about it, Get my book, The Sloth Investor. The method is all there. That's all for today. Please let me know in the comment below what you think of it. Give it a like. Subscribe to the channel. Tell all your friends about it so they'll subscribe too. I'll see you next time. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching.